Welcome back, friends. You may be able to hear that it's storming here. I've been wanting to make some uh, stuffing or bread dressing and mashed potatoes to have in the freezer for Thanksgiving so that my day is not filled with cooking that day. I wanted to make some lasagna to put into the freezer and then a large one for dinner tonight. So first off, I'm making some spaghetti sauce. To make things a little easier for myself, I browned the ground beef, chopped the onions, and added the onions to the ground beef mixture, cooked everything together, and then when it was cooked, I drained the ground beef and into a colander and then rinsed it with hot water. When the mixture was cooled, then I put it in into an airtight container and put it in the refrigerator. And I did this the night before so that everything would be ready for me the next day when I made the sauce. I used about two and a half to three pounds of ground beef and one onion. I put the meat that had been in the refrigerator overnight into a large pan and added three jars of great value or Walmart brand spaghetti sauce. And to that, I added salt and pepper, some garlic powder, some Italian seasoning, and three teaspoons of sugar. I added a small amount of water as I rinsed out the jars, the spaghetti sauce jars with some water to get every little bit of it. Then I put it on the stove for a simmer with the lid on and it cooked for about three to four hours. You'll want to cook it longer than I did um, with this big of a batch because it was a little bit watery. And you'll see that later when I go to make the lasagna. So here it's cooked for about four hours on a low heat. I cooked a large package of lasagna noodles in boiling water. After they cooked, I drained them into a colander and poured um, cold tap water over them so that they weren't boiling hot and then layered them onto paper toweling. I have a large 9 by 13 pan ready to go and two 8 by 8 pans. They're foil pans but I bought them at the Dollar Tree and they're not very sturdy, so I've got them. I've got two pans for each lasagna because they were so flimsy, they were um, coming out of shape just pulling the stickers off of them. So in my opinion, it's not a good value to buy them at Dollar Tree. I sprayed the pans with cooking spray and then I've lined the foil pans with parchment paper and I sprayed Pam on top of that. Um, I put a little bit of sauce down first and then I put the noodles and another layer of sauce and then some cottage cheese. You can see how watery that sauce is. It's separating from um, the thick part of the sauce. So you'll do better than me. You'll cook yours longer. But I'm adding some shredded par uh, mozzarella now and then putting another layer of noodles on top of that. More sauce and more cheese. More noodles and more sauce. I don't know if you can see on the far right, but I like to lay the noodles out on a couple of layers of paper towels uh, you can't leave them there very long or they'll stick to them, but that way it absorbs the water from uh, the boiling liquid or the boiling water. Then I put more cottage cheese and more mozzarella and going in with more noodles for the last layer and then I'll top it with sauce and some more mozzarella. You could use this with the sauce directly out of the jar and make more of a vegetarian type lasagna. Or you could, if you had leftover ground beef, you could just sprinkle that on. 
I just like cooking it all together for a long time. I feel like it, the flavors all meld together really well. And even though this was a little bit watery, it was a delicious lasagna and everyone loved it. And into the oven this goes for 30 to 45 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So on to making the smaller lasagnas that are going to go into the freezer. I'm just cutting the noodles here to fit better into the pan. I still didn't get it right, but it's good enough. And I just did the same thing, sauce, noodles, sauce, cheese, noodles, sauce, cheese, and just kept on building it like I did the big one. I ran out of noodles at one point and had to, um, I think I boiled 12 more, but um, that wasn't a big deal. I was in the kitchen cooking dinner anyway, so there you go. I decided to make a little tiny one without cottage cheese in it for me, and so that was cute. The store I went to that morning to get cottage cheese didn't have the lactate brand, and so sometimes it it uh, really upsets my stomach, so I just left it out on that little one for me. So I'm just going to continue building these until I have two and a half lasagnas. The cottage cheese you'll notice that I got is just really um, soupy. And um, so that's just personal preference. If you like the firmer kind, which I normally do, then go ahead and get that. But I don't think it really matters. Here's the big lasagna after I pulled it out of the oven and it's all warm and toasty and delicious. Here are the other two lasagnas and I wrap them really well in plastic wrap and then put them in the freezer. Now I'm making some stuffing or bread dressing for those of you that call it dressing if it's not stuffed in the turkey. I cut up some onion and some celery and put them in a fry pan with some olive oil and a big old knob of butter. And now I am slicing and dicing some apples up. I'll let the onions and the celery cook a little bit first and then I'll add the, uh, the apples. I did the cooking of the onions, celery, and apples the night before. And after they cooled, then I put them into uh, an airtight container and put them into the refrigerator overnight. I didn't have enough packages of stuffing mix. And so I um, had purchased some French bread and I'm just tearing that up and leaving that overnight so that that will get um, kind of stale and I'll be able to use that for stuffing also. I also browned up one of those big huge packages of Jimmy Dean sausage. I think there are three pounds and I did that the night before as well. I didn't think we were going to have enough because we had used some on pizzas that night and so I bought some more when I went to the store for cottage cheese I bought some more uh, sausage and here I am browning it up here. The day that I made the stuffing the French bread wasn't quite stale enough so I put it in the oven for about 15 minutes to get a little toasted. Then I put it in a bowl and put some of the apple celery onion butter mix on top of it. And I also emptied the two packages of Mrs. Cubison's stuffing that I had into a bowl. 
and put the rest of the apple, onion, celery, butter mix on top of that. And I'm keeping them separate for a reason. Now I'm adding the freshly cooked sausage to the Mrs. Cubison's stuffing. I added some rub sage to both bowls and also some vegetable stock that I made. And now I'm adding some dried thyme and salt and pepper to each bowl. Adding more sausage to um, the bowl with sausage from that container that I cooked the night before and then giving everything a good mix. And I'll need to add some more vegetable broth. You can use chicken broth if you'd like, or turkey broth. But this is dry, so I need to make up some more vegetable broth and add that to it. And I'm also going to add some olive oil to both of the bowls. And here I am mixing up some more uh, vegetable broth from the uh, from the little containers that you get that you have to keep refrigerated. I can't remember what they're called. Um, but anyway, just pour enough on until it is as moist as you would like it to be. You need to do it gradually though or you'll end up with a big soupy horrible mess. And by that, I mean pour a little uh, broth on, mix it, then pour some more on, mix it, until you get it uh, the desired um, moistness that you want. So I did a terrible job of filming this, and it's out of frame, but I also, at the same time I was mixing up the um, cubed mix, I was also mis mixing up the French bread one and I left that um, without sausage in it because I, one of my children cannot have uh, pork products. And so I am putting some of that before I add more pork to it into a bag to freeze. And this I will use for our Thanksgiving dinner. I'm going to be sure to label it so I know which bag doesn't have the sausage in it. I put the rest of the prepared sausage into that bowl of the French bread dressing. And now I am putting the rest of that into a bag to put into the freezer. And we'll use that bag for Thanksgiving Day. When I tried it, it was a little more salty than I like it to be. So I made a note on the outside of the bag that I might want to add a little bit of um, just plain French bread when I take it out of the freezer to use. And it wasn't overly salty, but I know that I would enjoy it better if, it, um, if the salt was cut a little bit with some French bread in it. So into the freezer, those two bags go. And then I need to bag up another bag from this bowl. And then I am going to make up a pan of stuffing to bake. And we'll use it for our dinner this week or to snack on. My family just loves it. When I was packing the stuffing up into the bags, 
I try to make them into the shape of the pans that they'll go into once I take them out of the freezer. Here I'm adding just a little bit of olive oil to the one that I'm going to put in the oven and that'll bake at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. I like it to brown a little bit. On Thanksgiving morning, I will pull the dressing out of the freezer and just lay it on the counter for a couple of hours until it thaws. And then I'll put it in a dish and then bake it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, 30 to 45 minutes. This is something that you could put into the crock pot as well. And here's the stuffing after it baked for 30 minutes. It smells wonderful. I have 10 pounds of potatoes here, plus another part of a bag that I need to use up that I want to make into mashed potatoes and freeze. Mashed potatoes from the freezer are really underrated and I really enjoy having that in my freezer and knowing that I have an easy and quick side dish ready to make for dinner. So as you can see that I peeled, diced, and boiled the potatoes. I put some salt in the water as they were boiling, and then I drained them and put them in a deep mixing bowl so that I could whip them with my electric mixer. After I drained the first batch and started mixing them into mashed potatoes, I put the second batch into the pan and onto the stove to boil. Butter, salt and pepper, and milk is all that I use with my mashed potatoes. I put a little bit more in the first freezer bag because this is the bag that we'll use for Thanksgiving Day dinner. And currently I'm not sure how many people we're having so I wanted to make sure that I had enough. I pressed all of the air out of this, sealed it up, and then put a note on it that this is the one that I wanted to use for Thanksgiving. They store easier in the freezer if you press them flat and also um, they will thaw quicker. If you have wire shelving in your freezer though, be careful because um, it will be hard to get out to take out once it freezes. So put a sheet pan or a cutting board underneath it until it freezes. I saved a bowl of mashed potatoes to use for our dinner for the next couple of days. And so here I am just putting saran wrap or plastic wrap around that and putting it in the refrigerator. And then um, all of these bags of mashed potatoes go into the freezer. In the future, when I wanna use one of these for dinner, then I will pull it out of the freezer and uh, lay it on the counter to thaw for a couple of hours. Um, sometimes I don't think that far ahead and I have put uh, them in the microwave before. Uh, take it out of the plastic bag, put it in a microwave safe bowl and put it in the microwave and defrost and then heat it up that way. 
and stir it up really well once it's warm. On Thanksgiving Day, I plan on putting them in my crock pot once they've thawed and warm it up that way on low for a couple of hours. You are going to think that something horribly went wrong as the water separates from the potato as it thaws and heats up, but give it a good mix, add some more milk and butter to it if you need to, and they will be just like the day that you made them. They're wonderful. So here are all the things that I made. The two lasagnas that I will pull out of the freezer and either bake for an hour or an hour and a half at 350 degrees Fahrenheit if they're still frozen or 30 to 45 minutes if defrosted. I have the two stuffings, uh, two mashed potatoes for regular night dinners and the mashed potatoes and stuffing for Thanksgiving Day. I love special days like Thanksgiving and Christmas, but I don't like to be stuck in the kitchen all day long. And so doing some of this prep work and freezer um, meals or side dishes ahead of time frees me up so that I can enjoy the day with my family. Thank you for joining me as I prepped some side dishes and then some lasagnas for busy nights that are to come. Goodbye and I hope you have a happy holiday.